Are you teaching math? I am, I am indeed, absolutely, Ozzy. What do you got? What do you got? I'm not from Australia, but do you know how to do long division? I forgot. Yeah, for sure, we can do long division. Let's do long division, brother. Or sister, of course. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Long division. Let's do long division. Let's do simple long division for now, right? Ronnie Chicho, I think I failed this exam that I uh, spent four months preparing for. I spent countless hours after work and weekends during the summer and fall. Sadly, the exam was soul crushing. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Ronnie. I've had that experience. Sometimes it's just, it's just not your day. And there is a thing called overstudying as well, right? When you do too much. Yeah, and what exam? The UK will welcome you with open arms. Chicho. Thank you, Hedgy. Thank you, Hedgy. Thank you for the follow, uh, gang. Uh, Ozzy, long division. Check this out. We'll do simple one. This is the example I use usually. 27 divided by 2, right? If you want to do this. First time chat. God bless you, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. Muhammad Daya. Hey, you seem like a really nice person. I appreciate the good vibe. My pleasure, Ozzy. My pleasure. Check this out. 27 divided by 2. Ozzy, do you know what that is just off the top of your head? What's 27 divided by 2? If you had 27 apples and you're going to split it between two people, how many apples does each person get? That's what a fraction means, right? Part of a whole or dividing something up between a certain number of people not Mohammed it's Mahmoud oh Mahmoud but all good Mahmoud how are you doing 13.5 exactly Ozzy Mahmoud how are you doing I've had I've had friends in my life called Mahmoud I wonder where they are now so this is 13.5 right remember you can also write 13.5 as this 13 and a half you can also write it as this 13 plus one and a half because if this guy you're gonna add 13 plus one and a half you're gonna go 13 plus 1 over 2 and that's 13 over 1 common denominator is 2 right what did you multiply 1 by to give you 2 you multiply by 2 so you multiply 13 by 2 so you multiply this by 2 you get 26 plus 1 and you get back 27 over 2 okay I just want to clear that up so you see the link right nice to meet you as well Mahmoud Nice to meet you as well. Fret not, Ronald. I'll be passing the next round. Now, check this out. This is how you do long division. 2, 27. So whatever you're dividing into, you put it inside the division symbol. And whatever you're dividing it by, you put out here. And then you ask yourself, oh, you multiply it across the denominator so that it can... Uh, like be a common denominator okay that makes sense yeah and you can convert this as well going this way you could go 2 times 13 is 26 plus 1 is 27 right 27 over 2 that's the other way to convert it as well right but this is sort of a more visual of it okay now check this out when you're doing long division this is what you need to do you ask yourself you take this number and you look at the first number here you ask yourself, does 2 go into 2? And if so, how many times? And you say, okay, 2 goes into 2 once. So you put your 1 there. And whatever you put up here multiplies this, okay? And is placed down here and you subtract it from this. You follow that pattern? So whatever you put up here multiplies this. And then whatever the result is, you put it here and you subtract it from the top, okay? So 2 minus 2 is 0. Once you hit this number, whatever this is, you're into, you move to the next number, right? And you can bring this number down. So every number you go, every step, you can bring down one number. Okay. I see what you show. Where do you think is a good place to live in the world? Uh, let's do this one. Uh, uh, sleepy ways ask the question again after we finish the long division so you bring the seven down and then ask yourself what do you multiply two by to give you seven or how many times does two go into seven 
That's the better question. You don't go home when you multiply two by to give you seven. You ask yourself, how many times does two go into seven evenly? And that's three times. So you put the three on top of the seven and then three multiplies the two and you put it here and you subtract it from here, right? So three times two is six. You subtract these, you get one. Okay. Now let me tell you how this plays out to this, right? So if you go 27 divided by two, what that equals, you go is 13 and one over two, one over two. So 13 and a half. This is called the quotient. This is called the divide, divisor, dividend. I forget what they're called. And this is called the remainder, right? So this is how the division works. Let's do another one. Okay, let's keep this up. Let's do another one here. Let's go three divided into 134, right here. Let's do another one, 134, 1,347. Now you ask yourself, what do you multiply three by to give you one? Well, three doesn't go into one evenly, right? And then you ask yourself, if it doesn't go evenly, if this number is too small to contain this, you go to the next one and you ask yourself, what do you multiply three by or how many times does three go into 13 evenly? Well, three goes into 13 four times. So you don't put your four on top of the one, you put it on top of the three, whatever number it is that you're starting off with, the complete, right? So four times three is 12. You bring the number here, that's 12. And then you subtract, you get one. And then you can bring the next number down. Right? You ask yourself again, how many times does thir three go into 14? Again, four times. And four times 13 is 12. You subtract, you get two, and then you can bring the seven down, right? You ask yourself again, how many times does 13 go into 27 evenly? Nine times. So you get a nine here. Nine times three is 27. You subtract it, you get zero. When you get a remainder of zero, it means this number goes into this number evenly. And how many times is that? 449. So one, three, four, seven divided by three is 449. Zero remainder. So it just goes into it evenly. Okay. Is that, does that help you out? Oh, all the memories of the long division process are coming back to me. I think I understand it now. I appreciate it a lot. My my pleasure. I'm glad it's working out. I see. I see. Ozzy says, wow, wait, that's so simple. The way that my teacher explained it to me was a lot more tedious. Yeah, I'm not a defender of our centralized education system. That is, that that is, uh, it is what it is, right? I don't know why they make it so complicated. It's not. You could have more complicated stuff you're doing division with. Here, let's do a polynomial division. Watch this. You got this? You can take a screen cap if you want. This is notes. Now watch this. We'll move on from integers, right? Let's do polynomial long division, right? Which is something that you need to learn how to do in grade 12 mathematics because it's important. So for example, let's assume you have this x squared plus 5x minus 7 divided by x plus 1, right? It's the same concept, right? That's a polynomial. That's a polynomial. You're asking yourself, how many times does this divide into the top, right? So you lay it out the same way. x plus 1 and x squared plus 5x minus 7. So again, you ask yourself, Hello, crafter. How are you doing? You ask yourself, and you're only looking at the first number, first letter or variable or number here. How many times does x go into x squared? Right? Well, it goes in x times. Or what do you multiply x by to give you x squared? You're trying to get rid of this guy, right? You multiply it by x. So x multiplies this and this because there's two terms here, right? So whatever you put up here multiplies everything here. X times X is X squared. X times one is X. So you 
take this, multiply by these guys, and you put the result here and you subtract this from this, right? So the way you can write it is you go, oh, this whole thing subtracted from that. But I don't like it. That makes it too complicated. So what I do is, what I do is, I call it the same thing. You subtract this from this, but all I say is multiply this by negative one and add it to that. So when you multiply by negative one, everything just changes signs. So if this is plus x squared, positive uh, x squared, it becomes negative and this becomes negative. So x squared minus plus a negative x squared or x squared minus x squared is zero. They kill each other. And then 5x minus x is 4x. And then you can bring this one down, minus seven. And you ask yourself, how many times does x go into 4x? Well, it goes four times. So you go plus four. This multiplies this and this again. X times four is four X. X times one is, oh, sorry, four times one is four. Change the signs and add them. This kills this, this becomes negative 11. Does X go into negative 11? No, it doesn't go anymore, right? It doesn't go anymore, right? So the way you write this is, this divided by this is equal to x plus 4 plus negative 11 over x negative 11 over x plus 1. Okay, that's what it is, right? This is called the division statement. Okay, the way you can write this is, and check this out, you can do it this way as well. Okay. Um, should I show you that? Should I show you that? Uh, yeah, here, let me show you this. This is d of x. Let's refer to it as d of x. It's a polynomial d of x. Okay. Let's call this small d of x, the divi divisor, dividend, dividend, divisor, the other way around. This is called the q of x, the quotient. This is called r of x. Okay. Now, if you're going to write this in these terms, okay, you can write it like this. This guy is big D of X divided by little d of X is equal to Q of X plus R of X over little d of X, right? So this is called the division statement in grade 12 polynomial long division and stuff like this, right? Evil told, I choo choo, I'm glad you are in, uh, in inventing new math. <laughs> I wish I was inventing this, I'm not, I'm regurgitating, right? So this is called the division statement, one version of it. Here's another way you can express this simpler. Multiply everything by the common denominator, which is d of x right now. When you have fractions in an equation, you can get rid of the denominators by multiplying by the common denominator. So multiply everything by d of x. So big D of x divided by little d of x, well, d of x kills d of x, so this side becomes big D of x. Q of x times d of x becomes Q of x times d of x plus R of x over d of x is just R of x. Okay, if we express, use this to express this, then this becomes x squared plus 5x minus 1 is equal to the quotient, which is x plus 4, times the divisor, which is x plus 1, is equal to negative 11, not equal to, sorry, minus 11, right? So if you foil this baby out and subtract at 11, you get this. Oops, this is a 7, my bad. Okay. We can test it, okay. Foil it out, you get x squared plus x plus four plus four minus 11. Combine your like terms, you get x squared plus, this is four x, five x minus seven. That is the same as that. And this is one way of writing it, okay. So this division comes into play higher level mathematics it is quite important okay all right Aussie hey Chicho 
I have to go to sleep, but I really appreciate the help. My time to leave has arrived, but I really got a lot of value from the teaching this quick lesson that you've given. Awesome. I genuinely appreciate it a lot. The internet needs more people. Thank you very much, uh, Ozzy. Appreciate the love, and I'm glad we could help out. We've got to do at least a little bit of math during the math stream. 